Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So I tested my fair share of smart glasses over the past four or five years. They all have one thing in common. They are quite bulky. And so right off the bat, these new smart glasses get one important thing right. This is called frame and it is not bulky at all. Other than one small part that you have to get really up close to see, frame looks just like a normal pair of glasses. I think I can wear this outside and nobody would notice anything unusual. But frame is far from normal. These are smart glasses that can run multi-model generative AI including chat GPT. There's a tiny camera up front that can do visual recognition and there are microphones that take in audio. This combined with an AI search engine allow Frame to understand the world around me or hear and understand my verbal commands and questions and then respond with contextual information or answers. So right here on my right eye is a tiny sliver with a prism which houses a micro OLED screen. This screen will project text in front of my eyes as if it's floating in front of the real world. The text projector are large enough that I can read clearly but not so large that it completely blocks what I'm trying to look at. So right now, the words I'm seeing, they appear to be about like, like this big, floating in front of me about this far away. While Frame does not have speakers itself, the companion app Noah, which is available on both iOS and Android, can read text out loud. So if you have your phone next to you and you have the volume up, you can hear what Noah is saying. Do you think I can wear these shoes to play basketball? Sure, if you want to sprain an ankle in style. In another example, I asked Noah to estimate how tall the building is and it correctly guessed that it is eight stories. How tall do you think this building is? It's tall enough to make you second guess taking the stairs. Probably around eight to ten stories. It's pretty accurate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stories. Hey, you got it right. You got it right. I can ask Noah to do a variety of things, like translate text that I see or words that I hear from one language to the other. Lo Entiendo translates to I understand. All right, where's the nearest coffee shop? The solution to the math problem, 9 minus 3 div frac 1, 3 plus 1, is 1. Well, just give me basic information like Hey Noah, what's 100 US dollars to Japanese yen? Noah can also scour the internet to find answers so you're always getting the live real-time results. I've been wearing Frame for the past three weeks across three continents and it mostly works as advertised. Sometimes Noah can be a little bit slow to respond depending on your cellular or Wi-Fi connection and sometimes Frame can't quite recognize text as accurately if it's kind of written in a small font. But considering how small these glasses are, I think the tech is very impressive. And best of all, Frame will keep getting better and better because the company that made the glasses, Brilliance Labs, they made Frame completely open source. So, so both hardware and software are open source and, and Brilliance Labs right now already has a developer community of over 8,000 members. Now, if you're thinking, Wow, for a Gen 1 bleeding edge device, these glasses are working so well. How is that possible? Well, it's because Brilliance Labs, the company behind the glasses, it's been around four years. It's founded by a former Apple program lead. And last year, Brilliance Labs already released a product called Monaco. It's a single lens clip on AR glasses. So technically speaking, Frame is a Gen 2 device. Now, while it is true that everything Frame can do, you can do on a smartphone. The benefit of having something like Frame is that you can wear it on your face and it frees up your hand. You don't always have to pull out your phone just to do every basic task. For example, right now I'm in LA and I get around mostly on my electric scooter. And when I'm riding on an electric scooter, I do not have a free hand to take out a phone and start typing. So with Frame, I can just tap on the touch sensitive panel to activate Noah and I can ask Noah contextual information like, hey, what's the temperature right now? Or, hey, lead me to the nearest Starbucks. And I can keep riding with the information in front of my face. I don't have to take my eyes off the road. And last week I was in Milan. I was able to use the glasses to translate Italian to English without needing to pull out my phone. I keep coming back to how lightweight and normal these glasses look. So frame weighs only 40 grams. So that's virtually nothing. So I can keep these on my face all day. They don't, you know, cause a strain on my head or neck like the Apple Vision Pro, for example. To charge frame, you have this orange clip that you clip on to the bottom of the glasses. It connects via a pogo pin. And then at the other end of this clip is a USB-C port. Just plug in a USB-C cable. Now battery life for frame unfortunately can be a little bit hit and miss. I've had days where I wore these for five or six hours and 
battery was completely fine throughout the five or six hours. But I've also had days where maybe I was using it quite a lot where battery ran out after two or three hours. I think it really depends on your cell reception and also how often you're asking frame to recognize visuals. Now frame is retailing for 350 US dollars right now. The price obviously isn't for everyone and there's some polishing that still needs to be done. But I really believe this is the next step in personal computing. Every major tech company right now, from Apple to Google to Microsoft to small startups in Shenzhen, they all believe that the future of computing is something that you wear on your face. They all believe that maybe in another six or seven years, you don't need to pull out your phone for every single activity. Frame is a first glimpse at that future, and I'm excited. And if you're a developer interested in developing for Frame, I'll have a link to the developer community in the description below. So that's about it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thanks for watching.